Hey y'all, welcome to the Team LocoFit Roundtable, hosted by me, Lauren Conlon, owner of Team LocoFit. Each week, I'm joined by one of our coaches to dive headfirst into the nutrition, training, mindset, and coaching strategies we use with our clients. If you love the show, please subscribe, leave us a review, tell a friend, you know the drill. And for more information about coaching, the programs we offer, and additional content, visit teamlocofit.com. All right, and we are back with Coach Sam. Hello. And this week, we are going to be covering organizational tips. Yeah. So, wow, that was a really aggressive. I don't know why I took my pencil and literally hit my hand. If you're not watching the video, that was so overly aggressive. I'm going to put this down. But organization, and I hate the word hacks. I almost said organizational hacks. Oh, I won't say that. But that is something that I would say yes. that we both that we uh, that we both love and thrive off of as Absolutely. team neurotic. <laughs> really high on that scale really so, high. <laughs> like, really high anyways um we we had a question about this somebody you know it suggested hey could you do a podcast on organizational just kind of tips in general and I, we wanted to cover a lot of different things not just hey like in the context of like what we do for like nutrition and training which we will cover um but really like for life because what we do with clients is we really try to focus on the whole picture. And while yes, obviously getting like your food and your training and all that, that is all a part of the rest of your life. So you can't just focus on that. And we can't just focus on that with a client because if we don't know how that's playing out with the rest of their schedule, nothing is ever gonna work. And that's when the client will be like, oh, I can't make this work. It's like, no, well, why don't we adjust it based on your schedule? And sometimes that's just organizing things and scheduling things a little bit better. And sometimes that's just a matter of us having to change things on our end as well. Yeah. And I think the big thing too, is like you said, it's not isolated. And so we need to look at your schedule and your situation on a whole first so that we can find ways to fit things in, to organize things and um, just break it down uh, piece by piece rather than expecting to just, if I line up these things, everything else is going to line up. It's like, no, just because you have your meal prep schedule doesn't mean that you're going to have the rest of your week. Yeah. Go so let's pick it up. What's the first thing that you want to cover with this? Yeah, so I would say the first thing is that looking at things on a whole and that I would recommend doing on a weekly basis. So this is something that I do and I have this schedule behind me if you're watching. I, I have a lot of schedules. <laughs> I really like organizing, but I have a weekly schedule that I fill out every week um, on Sunday night and I just go through um, and I like schedule out my workouts, schedule out when I need to get my shopping done, when I'm going to do my meal planning. Um, and I you know try to do things like when I'm going to get my cleaning done, because I find that I work a lot better in a, and working from home, especially I work better in a uh, clean and organized environment. <clears throat> and then other things like putting in big appointments that you have so that you can work around it. But being able to see the entire picture of your week, I think is super important. And especially when it comes to things like training, shopping, meal prepping, we've talked about this before. If it's not on a schedule, it's going to be pushed off. Because the things like your big important meetings, your appointments, those are always going to take priority. And so it's really easy to say, oh, yeah, I'd like to work out in the mornings, but I have this appointment on Tuesday. So I guess I'll work out on Thursday and Thursday rolls around. Oh, I'm too tired now. So being able to schedule everything out and see your week on a whole, I think is a really great place to start. For sure. And I think the weekly stuff is really, really helpful because I, I know, at least for me, I can get like, so like, oh my God, okay, what's going to happen on this exact day? And then you, you get to the next day and you totally forget about what's going on. And it's not like a, like congruent thing. And, and it's more, it's more important to look at the week versus just like the day. Um, now this is obviously going to differ if you have a traditional work schedule versus if you have a non-traditional work schedule. So say you work a nine to five Monday through Friday, your schedule is pretty set. I mean, of course, there's going to be times where like you have an appointment midday or something that has to come up. Um, but generally speaking, like, you know, you're either going to train before work or after work. Some people have the option to train during their lunch break, obviously depends on your work. Um, but for the most people, it's going to be morning or night. Um, and you have a lot more of a set structure. Now you're going to probably have to organize your work day within that time frame, but you know what time you're working. Um, now, if you don't have a traditional work time. Um, so let's say you do shift work, whether that's a 12-hour shift or longer, maybe even if it's a 24-hour shift, 
or if you, you know, are work for yourself, or if you do work at home, even though you work for a company, but now things are just very blurry with, you know, maybe working at home. So when you have a schedule that fluctuates, that requires a little bit more planning. But as always, there's a but, you can't plan too much and then get flustered. That's what I do. So, yeah. you know, as much as I try to keep things pretty consistent, I've had to learn that there is a very fine balance for me between, all right, I do certain things on certain days, but they're kind of all mixed in here. And I have to be okay to be flexible with that. Because if I just say, I'm only doing this stuff for these hours, it never seems to work out. You know what I mean? And then I can get unnecessarily <laughs> stressed out for no reason, because then it didn't go perfectly my way. Um, again, huh, neurotic. So when you are in that situation um, and you do have stuff that does fluctuate more, again, whether it's shift work or just a non-traditional work split, you need to be okay with, all right, there's going to be some days that I do certain things, um, but I have to also be a little bit open um, to this. Because for example, say I'm like, all right, on this day, I like to have calls around these times. Well, what if something comes up, this happens, like something comes up and I'm like, fuck, I wanted to do the call here, but, the, but it's like, okay, I, I, I can move it. Like it, it literally is okay for me to move it, but I have to pre-plan that, right? And I have to be okay with moving stuff around um, so that it is a little bit different. Um, but on a weekly schedule, my stuff is a lot more set as far as like, okay, these are my days with like heavy updates. These are my days that are heavier on like content or podcasts or whatever. So you kind of split it that way or travel, whatever it might be for you. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at it on the week, I think is the biggest thing that helped me also. Yeah. And that's a really good point too, with looking at where your demands are day by day, it can help you be a lot more realistic about planning things. Because if you were to say, um, you know, I, I really want to like, have a intense leg day today, like this week. And I'm gonna schedule that on the day that I'm gonna be sitting and doing content for eight hours straight. Like you're, and I'm gonna do that afterwards. You're probably gonna be mentally fatigued, not in the best mindset and not wanna do that at that time. So if you can look at your schedule and say, okay, these are my lighter days. These are when I'm gonna have a little more free time or even, um, you know, it could even be something like, I know I wanna take this class with this instructor at this time. So I'm gonna, try to arrange my day so that I can make that happen. But we can't do that unless we're looking at the week on a whole. So it can help prioritize and be realistic about setting that schedule as opposed to saying, oh, I'm gonna do this class on Thursday. Oh, I forgot on Thursday, I also have six appointments, two calls, and it's just not gonna happen, but exactly. yeah. That is one of the things that it's, we like to talk about it with food too, but like structured flexibility, that's like what we like to talk about like with clients with food, but that also really goes along with your schedule as well. Um, and it's so important, you guys, to plan training. I don't care how much you like training. When your life gets busy enough, it can be really hard. Now, again, if you have a very set structure, a very set schedule, like, you know, I work these days, these hours, it doesn't change all right, well, maybe that's a little bit easier for you to plan. Like, all right, that's what I used to do with school. Like for me, it was really no issue. Like I didn't really need to plan because I would be like, okay, I wake up early, I go do research, I go to school all day and then I leave and I go right to the gym. It was like literally not even a thing that I had to plan because that was just what I did every day. You know, now it's a little bit different again because my schedule is, it fluctuates a lot. And, you know, obviously my priorities are a little bit different too. So it's really easy for me to be like work mode, work mode. And and for, you know, for our clients too, like either work mode or family mode or both, then it's like pff, working out. No, no, no. Even if you love it, you still need to plan it. Um, and I find too, that when you do that, you're also a little bit more focused during the session, which is really important because most people um, really struggle with that, especially if they are busy. But if you go ahead and you plan it, you don't feel like that guilt, like, oh my gosh, I'm training. What else can I be doing? No, no, you already planned. I'm going to train. This is the block of time I'm spending at the gym. This is the block of time. Like you talked about going to the store meal prepping, whatever it might be, when you know that ahead of time, you're planning those things. Um, and even if you're doing something, uh, other stuff like morning routine, night routine, which we're going to touch on, you know, if you plan, okay, I'm going to do these things for this amount of time, or like you talk about, you have three things that you like to do every day. You might not have an exact time that you have that you're doing them, but you know, roughly how long those things take. Right. So like, okay, I'm, when you're doing it, you don't feel guilty then because you've already pre-planned it. Um, and it might not be that at that exact time, but you've pre-planned that you're going to do this activity or this effort or whatever it might be that moves you forward. And so you're not like constantly thinking like, oh my gosh, I should be doing something else. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. 
So we'll touch on morning and night routine really quick um, before we kind of get to more like life stuff, because this is, I think, one of the biggest questions with um, just organization and like productivity and all that, right? And, you know, we've talked about it a little bit before, you know, there's always people who have like this like super elaborate routine and like you hear that and it's like, honestly, to me, it's very overwhelming. Um, and that might be amazing that they can do that, but it's not something that like everybody I think should strive towards. Um, so I think that there's a few key things and I'll share a few things that work for me. You can share a few of the things that work for you. But really the whole point of this is like, you have to figure out what is beneficial for you or more importantly, where are you struggling? So for me, for perfect example, especially at night, it is so easy for me to just like be on my phone and to scroll, even if I literally don't want to, just because if it's there, right? So say my phone is next to my bed um, because it's my alarm. Well, oh, okay, it's charging right here. Let me just grab it. And like, and then just time goes by. So there's a lot of reasons why that's not a good thing, especially with like the, the light viewing at certain times and all these things. And it can really, really throw off your sleep. I mean, how many times have you looked at your phone for too long and your sleep is trash and you wake up, you don't even feel rested when you wake up. At least that's how it yeah. affects me. It really affects my eyes like a lot. If I'm on my phone too much, my eyes are trashed from it. Um, it's so interesting. And um, obviously there's like the whole like mental stimulation part of it too. And especially before bed, don't want to be doing that. So for me, one of the best things, and this isn't really like a nighttime routine, but it's, I've started putting my phone in a different room and using an alarm clock. <laughs> and, um, you know, on days that I don't need to set the alarm, I don't set the alarm. And then on days that I need to set the alarm, I do. And then my phone is in the other room. And literally there's sometimes where I'm like, where's my phone? And I'm like, why, why do I like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. You just are so used to it being around that it can feel weird, but that has been a lifesaver for me because like, no matter how much I would like want to just be like, scroll, I really don't want to be doing this. So I'm not going to get out of my bed and go to the next room to like unplug it. Like, I'm not like that addicted to it. It's just, if it's there, I'll look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if it's in the other room, I'm not going to get it like pre-bed. And then if I, same thing when I wake up, I'm not going to like wake up because again, if it's next to me when I wake up and that's, that's my alarm, I turn it off. Okay. Open it up. First thing you Email, messages, Instagram, blah, 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 scrolling. Yeah. What am I doing? I'm fucking looking at nothing. I'm deleting trash email. What am I doing? This is not how I want to wake up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's, it just happens. So for me, that has been one of the biggest things that have changed recently. Like I would just kept telling myself, no, I just won't look at it. it it's one of those things that just, if, if it's, uh, if it's hard, just eliminate it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I found that it was just too much to deal with. And I didn't want to have to like police my behavior on that. So I just said, you know what? It's going to go in the other room and it's been so much better. And once it's out of there, like I can get along with my nighttime, my morning routine, like so easily. Yeah. Um, so that's been a really big change for me guys. So if, if you are somebody who struggles with that, um, whether it's at night or in the morning or both, just kind of mindlessly being on your phone and mindlessly looking through things, I would really, really encourage to get a regular alarm clock um, or some kind of, you know, people have all these fucking Amazon Echo, whatever the hell those things are called. I don't have one of those, but if you have one, Alexa, yeah. that thing. If you have one of those, uh, everybody's Alexa's like, everyone's gonna say, everyone's just goes, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't want some robot bullshit in my house. Like, I don't know how people like live with this thing, anyways. I don't have any of that. I know most people who live in 2021 have those, so that could be your alarm clock, or you just get a regular alarm. Um, and then I have the one that like lights up, if you know what I'm talking about, like the oh, um, yeah, the, like the gradual light, movie. yeah. But I was like, man, this like really doesn't work for me, like, because our room is really really dark um and then <laughs> I was like yeah you literally sleep with the pillow over your face no wonder the light doesn't wake you up he's like I'm literally awake <laughs> in a minute you have the pillow over your <laughs> oh my God. okay so maybe that doesn't work for everybody but that's what I have you can get any kind of alarm clock like just get one and I find that having the phone out is so helpful yeah I actually this is a little pro productivity productivity hack Heck, <laughs> sorry, tree triggered. Um, <laughs> I I actually got this for Christmas and I love it. It's like a charging station for my phone and I keep it behind me. Like it, it just so happens it faces the other way because of the way the cord works. But I put my phone on that when I'm working and then I don't see it. It doesn't distract me. And then throughout the day, I will have that those moments where I'm like, where's my phone? And I'm like, oh yeah, I put it over there because I'm whatever is whatever I need to do typically is already in front of me and it's not on my phone I, that's just kind of how my work day goes um 
I know a lot of people need their phone on them all the time because they're taking calls or whatever all the time. So that's a little different, but just having like a place to put my phone, like you said, you keep yours out of the room. I put mine over here and it's not a distraction as much. Um, but as far as like routines go, I, I, I like routine. I, a creature of habit, but I also am somebody, if I stick to too much of a routine, I can get really um, anxious and like feel like closed in on like every day is the same. And I think a lot of people felt that way with COVID. And I've had a lot of clients say that where it's like, I'm bored. I feel like I'm living in a groundhog's day. I'm at home all day long. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything different. And so what I have found to be helpful for me is I actually have like written out like a flexible routine for myself where it's like during these hours, this is what I do, but that might look different every day. So I set like three things that I do every morning and I just put up a post on this, but I do um, morning movement and I try to get outside for that now that it's nice here, but morning movement, I journal for at least five minutes and that can be like a gratitude list or actual writing. Um, and then I make my bed before I leave my bedroom first thing in the morning. And these are all things that oftentimes I don't want to do <laughs> at all, especially making my bed for some reason, probably because I just have woken up, but it starts my day off with discipline and doing things that I don't want to do. Um, and those things don't all happen within like the first 30 minutes of my day. My walk might not happen until 10 a.m., but there are things that I do on a like routinely, I routinely do them, but it's not like do this, then this, then this, then this, then this. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times that's what routine people think routine needs to look like. It's like, this is my schedule. It's like, no, just do these things, but do them when it works, but you do also still have, to have the discipline to do that. Yeah. And obviously again, it's going to depend on somebody's schedule. You know, are you somebody who has to be at work at a certain time? every single day that's going to be a little bit different than when you get to say okay I work this many hours but I can choose the times so that's different do you have an appointment that day and normally you'd be going for a walk and you know sipping your coffee while you're drinking gratitude list but oh I have to bring my car in for service like you know of course it's gonna be days where things happen and that's where that kind of like flexible mindset is really important but having a few things that you do in the morning that kind of set you off on the right foot and the same thing at night I know for me um one, I try to, not try, I do, <laughs> I'll take a cold shower in the morning and like a warm shower at night. And that helps um, like kind of with like body heat and all that stuff. So, um, and it just generally like, like the, the cold shower will help wake you up and the warm shower will help like kind of bring you down. I don't um, know how people do that. I can't, I've tried taking cold showers. I can't do it. Actually, okay. I, hold on. I started doing it during prep though. It's like a discipline thing. And I was like, screw this. I am disciplined enough. I don't need to do this to myself. <laughs> okay. So when I say a cold shower, like I kind of put it like midway and then as I'm kind of in the shower, then I kind of just make it colder and then I just kind of rinse off and I'm good. Like, it's not like a whole, like a 10 minute, like I'm in the freezer. Like I'm not doing like, you know, some Wim Hof shit over here. Like, it's literally just like a cool cold shower. Like, uh, you know, we're good. Okay. Also, okay. I live in Florida. So even our cold water is vastly different than up north <laughs> cold. Like seriously, like I'll get in the water up north and I'm just like, like I yeah so okay. maybe that's maybe that's why Sam you know what it's not that you're not disciplined it's that you live in the tundra so actually really um <laughs> so and I feel like the water never gets super hot up north either because it's like takes forever so um so down here so like I said morning I'll do kind of like the colder shower and then I try to get some kind of either light or movement ideally both um and this is all stuff that I've posted about a bunch. Um, Dr. Huberman talks about it all the time. It's really, really insightful as far as how much like light and heat affect our circadian rhythms. So in the morning for me, I wanna obviously be productive and wake, wakeful in the morning for me. So I'm gonna take a colder shower and then ideally I'm gonna view sunlight within a certain amount of time of waking up. He recommends typically around like two hours after. Um, and then obviously it's going to depend on like when the sun and all that, I'll, I'll just refer you guys to his podcast. He says it much better than I ever could. Um, so I'll put that link below. And, um, so for me, what's, what I like to do kind of how you said the morning movement, um, when possible, I'd like to go for like, okay, I'm going to be outside, see the sun and also hopefully go for like a 10 minute walk. Right. Because I'm pretty sedentary during the day now. Um, and you know, if I'm training, that's great. I just kind of like before I work out, I just kind of go for a little bit of a walk. Um, and some days, you know, it doesn't happen. It's not like it happens every single day, but I'm trying to do that. I also have like a light on my, um, my bathroom counter, like a bright light. So I turn that on like when I'm getting ready. So I'm kind of trying to get some light and the cold water. And then at night, 
similar thing, like at the end of the day, kind of like as sun is setting, he recommends, you know, seeing that kind of light as well. Um, so I'll try to again, go for like another like 10 minute walk. Um, that also helps particularly with my eyes um, after like being on a screen all day, just to like be outside and like be looking wide. Um, and then before bed, taking a like hot, shower so those are just like a few things that i found to be really helpful that aren't like super time invasive and you can check a lot of boxes with those similar things um you know okay i'm getting outside i'm 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 not on screens i'm looking wide and out that's helping my vision i'm getting sunlight exposure at certain times which can help my circadian rhythm i'm getting steps in because i'm going for a walk like you can hit a bunch of things and if you time it up around a meal okay now i'm getting a post meal walk like you yeah. can do all of these things and it doesn't take you know, so long. And um, so I just find that those are really, really helpful. And then, like I said, especially keeping the phone away um, because it's, it's, it's really not necessary to be on it. Yeah. Um, like, you know, when, again, when you're scrolling, when you're going to bed and right. when you are like, right when you open your eyes <laughs> and it's just, it's just too easy to just do that. Yeah. Um, so avoid it if you have a problem with it. Yeah. And I, I, totally agree with what you said about like the everybody's schedule looking different and this is going to really depend on what your daily demands are what your work schedule looks like what your life schedule looks like but I will argue that when you have like daily non-negotiables like this you can build them into any schedule damn near I I used to start my day at 3 10 and be at work by 3 uh 4 15 and was I getting up and doing my gratitude list before work? No, I did my gratitude list after oh, work. But like, <laughs> literally at 3 10 in the morning, just, just journaling away, meditating, having a great time. No, it didn't happen then. And same thing with when I was teaching, I was, you know, at school at 6 30 in the morning, wasn't doing these things before then, but I still built them into my day. And it's a matter of building those daily schedules too, and prioritizing what's important to you. And I'd be really interested to do this podcast again after I have this baby. So see how yes. things change because the demands change. And, and like we talked about before, seasons of life change, but with, with being deliberate about it, being intentional about it, we can fit these things into our day. And so I don't know, I think we we're going to talk about that too, like daily scheduling too. Yes. So let's kick that off, but we will definitely yeah. do a part two, like life. <laughs> Everything I thought I knew. God. <laughs> it's all a lie. <laughs> First of all, I you know Sam is going to be cracked the hell out on caffeine. Just giving you guys a warning. Next time you see her and she's not prego, she's going to be like, Hey guys. Huh, so <laughs> well, it's fingers crossed, man. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I miss it. Missing that buzz. <laughs> <sighs> yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, daily routine or daily yeah. schedule. Yeah. Um, daily schedules. Again, the, the theme of this podcast is going to depend on what your life looks like, right? Like some people are going to have way more set schedules than others. Um, like for example, a teacher, you have your, your daily periods, your, what your schedules look like. Um, but something that I, have found that I've done in every stage of my life when I was a teacher and I had in you know I say eight to five but really six to three four you know job um, and when I was at Orange Theory and I had a random schedule and when now that I'm working from home I've done the same thing and that is I start off with a to-do list for the day and write out everything that needs to get done starting with my top three priorities and then everything else that needs to get done that day and then I time block it or put it into a schedule. And I'll, I'll have to link the planner that I've used for like five years below. Um, I'll, I'll send that over and link it because it's just amazing. And I've had so many people like start using it because it has a to-do list and it has a schedule. So yeah. it's really easy to transfer that over. But in, yeah, in having that list and then having the actual time that you're putting it into your day, you know what you need to get done and you know when you're going to do it, which are the two most important things because you can write that list and then be like, oh yeah, I forgot I needed to do that, but I didn't make the time for it. But if we have it listed out, we have the time for it. It's a lot easier to get those things done. And then I also find that in time blocking, as opposed to saying just like at 1030, I'm going to do this thing. It's like, between this, these times, these are the things I want to get done. It's also helpful to have that flexibility, like you said, where you're not like time bound to this thing. 
Yeah, but, I would um, say I, that's my biggest thing. No, I do the same thing with my um, the planner that I have. I I can link that too. Um, it it's it's similar. I'll show a page that I don't have written on, so you guys are like, what's going on today? Um, so anybody who's not who's not watching, sorry. But so basically, it starts at six and it goes to nine. And it has all the different lines and then there's like the top five things and then there's like extra notes and then of course there's other stuff too which is like water and training and, and meals which is you know if you need to track that that's also really helpful so this is emily forcello's planner and i've used it for two years now and i really like it um for the same reason because what i like to do is there are certain things that have to be done at certain times like hey we're recording a podcast that's going to be from this time to this time i have a phone call this time to this time um, and then like we talked about, okay, training or whatever. And if I write in training, oh, nine o'clock happens at 930. It's okay. But for the other stuff, it's like, let me plan the exact time and how long it's going to take. And on the other kind of columns, I can write, like you said, the other stuff that I have to get done. And I fill those gaps in there. So it's kind of a combination of like time blocking, but also being flexible because you know, for me, I've done, I've done, I've tried to like hyper block it. And then I'm like, I get more obsessive with like that than like actually getting stuff done. Um, but there is a, there is a real benefit of putting like a limit on your time for yourself. So say it, so say you want to do like, and again, something like a podcast, a little bit different because you know, okay, they're roughly going to be this long. This is how long you spend kind of doing it. Right. Um, but say it's something where you could get like very easily distracted. Um, instead say like, all right, I'm going to do this for the next hour. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to set a timer. Maybe you need to do whatever. It, it just kind of depends. Um, I have this little like cube timer where it has like a five, 10, 15 and like 30 minute, like things so you can like have it as like a little timer. If you like don't want to have your phone there too. Yeah. Um, and it's really helpful because sometimes, again, like something that could take me an hour might take me two if I'm distracted or I'm like, oh, I can do this later. And like, let me think about, something. oh, I looked something else up. Oh, grab my phone. If you say, no, I have an hour to do this, mm -hmm. you're going to be a lot better at it. So, or a lot more efficient, I guess is the better word. Yeah. Because um, yeah. it's all going to get done. Like everything always gets done, but how you're doing it. <laughs> and nobody gets a badge for working longer if they're not doing more stuff. So if you're doing the same amount of work in four hours versus six, congrats, you have a terrible schedule. And listen, I do that too. You know what I mean? So not every day is going to be like the most hyper productive, amazing day, but you don't get this like gold star for working six hours when you could have done it in four. If you work two extra hours, good job. Now you're moving ahead. But we want to say, okay, how long is this roughly going to take me on a you know, maybe not my best day, but not my worst day either. And how, like, let me time block this amount. Um, I started to realize that when I, when I was traveling a lot and I would work on planes and I started to love working on planes because, you know, there is a finite amount of time that you're on this plane and there really are limit. There's a lot of distractions going on with like the plane, but there's not a lot of life distractions because yeah. You can't really be reached. Um, right. Even if you do get the Wi-Fi, it's really it's not as fast, and it's not everything's always like pinging you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I always just found like, wow, I get so much done. Like, why is that? Well, because I'm putting myself in an environment to be productive. So I'm really like fucking off when this normally takes me six hours, and I just got it done in four. <laughs> like, what am I yeah. doing? You know what I mean? So that was really a big wake up call for me. And again, listen, some days you're just going to be spacing out. Some days you're going to be distracted. Some days you're just going to be like out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can put our environment in a situation, in a position to where we are thriving, mm -hmm. you're going to be a lot better off. Yeah. And I, there's a tool that I like to use too, that's a, um, a, a Chrome extension on your browser and you, there's apps for it and stuff like that too. But um, there's, it's a time blocking. Oh gosh, I wish I could remember the name. It's it's hard for me to pronounce anyway. So probably a good thing I don't remember it. But um, it's a time blocking uh, strategy that has been shown to help people be a lot more productive. And it's 25 minutes on, five minutes off. Mm -hmm. And so the timer goes on, work for 25 minutes, and the actual Chrome uh, app will block certain web pages for you if during that time period span if you need to. Um, and then it'll give you, say, a like five minute break. And it really does help with productivity because 25 minutes is goes by like that and you're like oh shoot okay uh five minutes up gonna go to the bathroom grab water come back and um it, it's just that doable amount of time too and uh, i found that to be really helpful because that is human nature to say oh i have i have three hours to get this done you're gonna take three hours to get it done it's just yeah. the way that we work and I think with us now not being so much in like traditional work settings I think that a lot of people are moving away from that but um 
and recognizing that like we don't you don't need to work eight hours if you don't need to work eight hours let's set let's get it this done in four hours and that's great awesome sweet you don't have to pay for eight hours worth of work you know it's only gonna take you four um but uh that also has to do with the way that we focus when we work too <laughs> you're not just yeah. gonna you're not gonna do it unless you have the intentionality to do it so that's been something that's been helpful for me and um same thing i do like the top three to build into my schedule and um also uh, I think the first thing that I do start with too is like appointments that I have so that I can build my day around those things that are immovable. Yeah. So last thing to touch on, let's just go over a little bit of kind of like life, house, all those things that influence everything else that we do with clients and everybody mm -hmm. else's life as well. Yeah. I think the number one thing that comes up that is outside of our control, uh, aside from like work and, and life demands is relationship uh, relationships with not only significant others, but also with family members or support systems in not being able to understand your needs and your demands of your schedule. So, um, for example, a lot of moms that I work with, um, they, they want to do certain things for themselves, but they have a lot of people to take care of. They have a household to take care of. They have their jobs most of the time. And so finding time for themselves can feel really selfish and it just doesn't happen. And so one of the, the things that I have found to be really helpful for people is to one, let's make sure that there's communication with those people first so that they know what you need in your schedule so that you can schedule together to say, okay, I, I need to work out today and I know that you work from this time to this time. So would you be able to pick the kids up from school so that I can go to the gym before I come home? Whatever that looks like, but be able to coordinate your schedules through communication. Because if we're not expressing that this is what I need and this is when I can do it, can you help me with this? You're just hoping that people can read your mind. And then the second thing with that is I find that shared calendars are huge. I know a lot of moms already use this. I know a lot of uh, parents in general use this for um, like sporting events and kids schedules, but use it for things that you also want to prioritize in your life. So if I want to take this class, share it with your significant other, share it with your, um, your kid's grandparent or whoever's watching them and say like, I'm going to be here at this time. Um, can you please help me with that? But being able to have that visual and to be able to have that constant tool of communication can be really helpful. For sure. And like you said, you nailed it. I mean, nobody's a mind reader, right? So um, if you don't express that, a lot of times other people don't know. It's not that they're being rude um, or mean or don't care about you. It's just because maybe they don't know, um, especially if this is a new thing that you're trying to do. You know, so if you are trying to do this new class or this new, you know, gym routine or whatever, and that's, you've never done that before, you can't expect somebody to understand like that you <laughs> need time for that. You know what I mean? It might just not even, they just might not even think of it. Right. So sharing with other people, I think is going to be really, really key. And then as far as just like stuff around the house and you kind of already touched on a little bit, like having a, an environment that you like, and everybody has different standards of like cleanliness and orderliness and all that's like your own personal thing. Um, but whatever works for you, you need to stay on top of that as well. So whether that is like, all right, I need to make sure, and again, not getting neurotic about it. Like, you know, I see some people like, okay, on Mondays I do this on Tuesdays and, and I kind of get that to a degree, but then I also know that that can be like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. Like it's Tuesday, like I've got to clean those toilets again. I every fucking do like, right. Like sometimes it can be like really overwhelming. Like I could have done this yesterday, but now today's really busy. Like, it, yeah. So that's great in theory. And I think the whole idea is just to like break stuff up into like manageable pieces. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's, you know, what they need to do for their house and their environment is going to be different. You know, if you live by yourself or it's just you and a significant other, um, that might be a little bit different than if you have two kids and two dogs, like that's going to be a very different cleaning situation. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not one right or wrong way to do it, but figure out how you can stay on top of it. Um, and what, you feel good about because again if, especially if you're working at home I mean I know for me like if there's certain things that are like very messy I get very overwhelmed um yeah. and that sounds so crazy but for people who are like that they understand I'm the same way um so like if the like I never really leave dishes out like as soon as I 
like if anybody's ever been to my house, like when I eat, I wash them right away and then I put them away. Like it's just, and I never even noticed that that was like weird until one of my friends was like, you literally like washed up and put it away right away. And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, so for me, other people that doesn't bother them at all. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? They just, they do it all at the end of the day. That works better for them. For me, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like I eat, clean up and then it kind of, I can come down again and see everything's all nice. Now, again, some days shit's crazy. Yeah, just gotta leave, you know, leave this soaking in the sink. Like I gotta get out of here. Mm-hmm. but for the most part like having a clean very roughly organized kitchen is really important for me um so I know that that for me and if my desk is a mess not good either you know I try to keep minimal stuff on there so that that isn't like visually overwhelming for me either so figure out what is necessary for you in your environment especially in your house mm-hmm. um, and then again communicating with a significant other in particular um, or family about stuff is going to be really really important mm-hmm. so I know we touched on a bunch of different things as far as organization goes. So if you guys have any other specific questions or like, hey, we want you to like really dive deep into this, uh, let us know. But I hope that that was a kind of a broad conversation on organization Mm -hmm. um, because it really is so important. It doesn't mean that I think it's an important topic because people either are like so insanely organized um, and like hyper focused on it. Like we both said that like we can get or they're just very disorganized and they see that and they're like, oh, I can't, that's never going to be me. And it's like, it doesn't need, that doesn't need to be you. Like you don't have to be Google Calendar Central. Like that doesn't like need to be you. No. But if you organize a few things in your life, you'd probably be a lot more productive. Um, and you had some kind of a weekly schedule. I think if you're going to start with anything, start with that. Like start with the weekly thing. Take one day to kind of plan out some of the basics. Like Sam said in the beginning, plan out your workouts, plan out, you know, okay, I'm going to clean a little bit this day for this many hours. I'm going to go to the store this day, make some food. I'm going to, you know, work these days or these hours and just have like a rough outline of the week. And then you'll be able to plan things so much better around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a huge part too, especially if you're somebody who maybe isn't the most organized, or even if you are somebody who's hyper-organized is to recognize that nothing is ever going to go as planned ever. And so for you to expect that this, this weekly plan is going to you know, play out perfectly, it's just not going to happen. So be, be able to have that flexible mindset and say, okay, I plan to do this workout today. Definitely not going to happen. When can I fit that in? And then be okay with that and not beat yourself up for not letting that happen or to say, well, I tried this planning thing and it didn't work at all. So now I'm not going to do it anymore. And um, so be flexible with yourself and be forgiving with yourself in that aspect. And then on top of that, when you were like first starting to plan it out, like don't feel like you need to get into the weeds in this, like give yourself those big chunks of windows and or big chunks of time. (laughs) Dude, words are not a thing for me right now. (laughs) Um, Give yourself those big chunks of time, fill them as you need to. And then over time, it might feel like, especially if you're not a planner, this is so much work. I hate planning out my entire week, entire day. But just like everything else, it becomes a habit. It becomes a routine. You get used to, oh, I, I do just, I do my groceries on uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. And you don't need to plan that anymore. And it just becomes part of your routine. But it does take a little bit of effort up front. And then it becomes just part of your life. Discipline equals freedom. Really, I know that that sounds <laughs> super cheesy. Um, so but it's, it is so true. And the first time I heard um Jocko say that I was just like huh I was like damn you're right and honestly that message has stuck with me and obviously he's probably one of the most disciplined people ever if anybody doesn't know Jocko Willink is uh, just look him up but um he has some really great resources and books and is a very highly disciplined person but the whole point of the discipline is to allow for freedom in life and it actually it seems like it's the opposite but it's it's really not when you start to become a little bit more disciplined with your time um you actually end up having more time on the back end. So thank you guys as always for listening. If you want to check out the other episodes, you can go to our website, teamlocofit.com or check us out on Spotify and iTunes. Um, We are on both of those platforms. And then if you want to apply for coaching, you can also visit our website, read articles that we've written and just check us out. Wow, that sounded weird. All right. You guys know, I need to just figure out a better outro, but for now you can check us out (laughs) and you can go to teamlocofit.com and we will Catch you guys next time. (laughs) Bye.